Hey everyone. So the next couple of video lectures are going to be going through a key feature that we're going to be talking a lot about in this course, not just for the next class session we have, but over and over throughout the rest of the semester. And so I wanted to um, set this up a little bit beforehand. So there's four video lectures that are going to follow. And the idea here is that we're going to be going through four hurdles to assess causality. So as a starting point, you've probably all heard the phrase that correlation doesn't equal causality. Um, and people say that a lot, and it kind of raises the question of, well, how do you know if you have causality if it's not just correlation? So the four hurdles for causality are giving us these four different litmus tests that we can use to figure out whether something um, is really a causal relationship or whether there is something else going on, right? And so the idea is that um, if you're going to be saying that something is causal, that's a really high bar that you wanna set and you need to be going through all these hurdles to really convince us because we're pretty skeptical. So what are these four hurdles? Well, let's get started here. Um, so the four, yeah, four hurdles to assess Causality, causality. All right, so the first hurdle is whether we can say um, that there is a causal mechanism that we could imagine. So is there a credible causal mechanism? Okay. I'm gonna be going through each of these in more detail. Each one is gonna get their separate um, video lecture, but just to preview, this means is there a reason we think that X and Y could be related to one another? Can you convince me that there might be some sort of pathway that would connect the two of them to each other? The second one would be to rule out the possibility of reverse causality. Is there reverse causality? And that would be if Y caused X. Right. If your cause is really um, the thing that you're saying is the dependent variable is actually triggering the independent variable, that basically you have that causal relationship flipped around, then you can't say that there is this causal relationship that was in your hypothesis. So you've got to convince me that there wasn't some sort of reverse causality for me to buy the, the causal hypothesis that you want to test. Next one is whether um, there's correlation. So is is there correlation between X and Y, right? And this is the one that you always see, oh, that correlation doesn't equal causality. But you first need to show me, yes, there, there is some sort of correlation for me to think that there could be a relationship that's causal between X and Y. And then the last one that we're gonna cover would be that you've eliminated the possibility of compounds, or at least greatly reduced them. Um, and so we're going to cover what confounds are, but it would be something that literally the word confound, confounding, confusing a relationship, that there's something else going on that makes it look like there's this cause relationship that's leading to some sort of correlation, but actually you don't have that causal relationship that you hypothesized. All right, so these are the four hurdles to assess causality. We're going to go through each of them in turn, but I wanted to set them up to preview you so you know what you're looking for and think about how all four of them are going to be connecting together.